Hello, my name is Triadart. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman style marketplace in Minecraft. Let's get started. So the first thing we will do is take a little tour around the marketplace. Now this is sort of a hybrid between a Roman marketplace and a Greek agora. But there are some things I have done on it to make it distinctively Roman. For instance, the pediments here have an arch incised into the triangular thing. That is a typical Roman feature, as well as the triumphal entranceway here into the marketplace itself is also a Roman feature. Behind this, we also have a Roman temple up here as well. Of course, what makes this a Roman temple is that it is on a high podium, and it has stairs only on the front. And also it has uh, pilasters and a couple of other things about it that make it uniquely and uh, characteristically Roman. We also have these side arched entablatures here that I believe were uh, first done on Emperor Hadrian's villa at Tivoli. So we're stealing all of those from there and combining um, several Roman motifs and everything into what I consider to be a Roman style marketplace. And I assume if you're going to be building this in Minecraft, you could probably use this for maybe a villager trading hall or a, a central marketplace on your server or something. That'd be a good place. If you want to have a nice uh, shop to sell some things, you could uh, line the other hallways here with chests and everything underneath the covered pavilions. As you can see, this is done in the Corinthian order with our one block diameter columns here, all made out of diorite. We have some decorative ferns. Uh, we also have a uh, unique feature here. We have some gold ore done on the pavement here for the courtyard. Of course, it's a, just a simple repeating pattern, by the way. I think you can quite cl clearly see how that is working. Uh, we also have a central fountain here, a very simple and basic fountain. And of course, the central temple here as well. I imagine this space is mostly used for the uh, local tax collectors to probably set up shop in so uh, they can uh, collect their taxes from all the merchants and everything in here. Of course, the Romans were very big on collecting their taxes. So now that I have given you a good overview of the Roman style marketplace, Let's take a look at the bill of materials you are going to need to construct this fine Roman edifice. So you will be needing 4,972 blocks of diorite, 6,056 cobblestone, some water, 693 gold ore. I don't think that's too many for you to collect. It'll take some work, but I think you can do it. 35 smooth stone slabs. 818 cobblestone slabs, 133 stone brick slabs, 748 nether brick slabs, lots of torches, 972 cobblestone stairs, two blocks of nether rack or two campfires, 72 trap doors for the uh, potted plants, 794 stone bricks, 37 chiseled stone bricks, not lodestones, 1,949 stone brick stairs, 16 cobblestone walls, 1,556 red nether brick for the roof, 18 large ferns, and one door of your choice. I prefer spruce or a dark oak, but if you have a favorite door, you can use that as well. All right, now from this point onward, let me explain the format that we will be going for. Of course, it's laid out in my usual way as a sort of instruction manual. So this building has a center line, meaning that what we built on the left side of the building here will be mirrored on the right side on uh, the, the center line, like uh, that there. So as we go along, I'll probably be focusing on maybe the left half, but realize that the right half is done in exactly the same way. Uh, so let's start out with some of the phases here. So the first phase here is always one block tall, but each subsequent phase I'm going to show you is going to be two blocks tall. In other words, the building is sliced up from the ground to the top, and you will be 3D printing this in layer by layer from the bottom to the top. And it's not a very difficult build, so I think you will be able to do that without much trouble. 
So now that is done, let's take a look at some dimensions. Now, over here, the dimensions for the building are as follows. It is 75 blocks wide that way, 85 blocks long back that way, and 22 blocks high. And this goes all the way to uh, probably that point over there on top of that uh, pediment over there is going to be the full height of the structure. Uh, this includes the stairs here, by the way. It's sitting on this stair block, so that means it includes that. Um, but it is 75 blocks wide from stair to stair. And it was, uh, what, 85? Uh, 85 blocks long from stair to stair back here. Now I'm pointing this out because there are some key differences here at the front that's not included in that measurement. Um, the front pediment here for, well, the front foundation for the entranceway, it projects out two blocks uh, like so from the uh, measurement for the length that I have just given you, so uh, keep that in mind. And also back here for the back of the temple, it projects out three blocks from the stairs here, right? So in total, if you take those two into account, it would be uh, 90 blocks long, but it's uh, 75 by 85 for the initial square. So you will want to uh, lay that out and count it twice uh, from uh, here to the other side, like I showed you with the cobblestone stairs. And behind that, we then want to start laying out all of the uh, foundation here, which I will count uh, a lot of this out for you. So, uh, where should we start? Uh, start at the corner over here, I guess. So, from this point here to this point over here on the stairs where we make the first turn, this is going to be 32 blocks to that point there, and then you come out two blocks, and then you go, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the seventh block there will collide with our center line that we have that's going to be running through the entire structure here. And so you will just mirror that on the other side over there. Uh, now for this other one, you can just make a straight run of stairs, 85 blocks long, all the way to this point back here. And from this point, uh, what, here, to, I think, this point here, that is going to be 30 blocks along from that section there. And then you will turn the corner for three blocks and then go uh, however many blocks it's going to take until you get to the center line over there. And the total width of this back here is going to be 17 blocks for that entire width there. All right, so let me just give you a top-down view of the platforms here. We just have standard floors of uh, cobble and diorite. And the diorite here is just in a band and it is set back three blocks from the edge here on all of the uh, sides here, three blocks there and there. And you can you can actually just uh, count from the diagonal. You can count three blocks here, and then this will be the, the, the uh, diorite block there. And then you skip a block with cobble, and then fill the rest in with diorite. And this, this entire square is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks wide by... 20 blocks along uh, that way. And uh, the same measurements for the three blocks of cobble to the stairs hold true on either side over here. And as we go through, I'm going to kind of ignore the placements of all of the ferns over here because I think you can quite clearly see that without me having to directly give you measurements for those. Uh, let's take some measurements for the back now, I think. So the same uh, diagonal that I talked about for the diorite at the front 
is the same at the back here. Three blocks and then the fourth block here will be diorite. Uh, and then the measurements from this point here to here, that is going to be 20 blocks by what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine blocks there. And then back here, this is where uh, it's going to be colliding with the temple over here. So this, I think, what, from this corner block here to here, that is going to be 16 blocks along there. So I think that is going to be enough measurements for you to replicate this. So I'll just give you a good top-down view of this entire section we have going on here. All of the cobblestone you are laying out with the, the uh, diorite floors. And back to the front here, the front sections for the entranceway and the two side pavilions. Uh, now, as I'm doing this, I think you can also clearly see the pattern, the complete pattern for the courtyard. It's just a series of inter interlocking squares made out of gold ore, diorite, and cobblestone. And of course, a right dead in the middle of the entire thing here. You can just kind of, kind of count the squares for that. You will be placing the block to site your fountain. And then you want to have it be done in a circle like uh, this here. And I'll give you one quarter of the circle there. And over here, we have, we should extend out the foundation. So you already know that this is three blocks here from the corner over there. This is all a three block border, like I said, for the thing over uh, at the front. And from the middle, from our center line, which is going to be running through here, you want to place some stairs for what? One, two, three, four, five, six blocks, and then go three more blocks. And then back, including this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14 blocks will get you to this point back here that I referenced earlier. All right. So it's a lot of explanation, but it's really a very simple foundation. I don't think you will have any trouble building it. Remember, along the way, just pause the video and replicate the block patterns that you see on your screen. It is designed to be paused in that way so you can follow along and build visually uh, at your own pace. All right, let's talk about the, the front entrance way, I think. So this is a triumphal arch. I have already done one of these in the form of a Roman nether portal, but I have uh, lengthened it by one block and modified it a bit. And the foundations for that are just made out of uh, cobble. Just trace out the whole, the whole foundation layer of the cobblestone with the red wool here. Like that, you want to lay down cobble like that. And then on top of that, you want to be putting a series of stone brick stairs and full blocks. It's mostly stairs and then three full blocks on the inside here. Uh, both of these are uh, stone bricks, by the way. Both of these blocks here in my texture pack. Uh, below this is cobblestone. I think you can clearly see that. Um, so uh, here is a full uh, reference model for all the little ferns. Of course, you have a dirt block or a grass block. And then just place the trap doors for uh, plant pots on either side of those and put your burn right in the middle of those and as we go I think you can clearly see all the placements of those because they're just uh, set at sort of regular intervals on top of the square courtyard pattern. Now the next part is we need to build a whole a bunch of column bases because as you see our marketplace is uh, festooned with columns so we need to build the bases and those are going to be done just out of straight cobble and stone bricks and in the middle here, you can you can make that cobble or whatever you have handy. And then on top of this, we're going to be putting the diorite column drums. Now, in general, the intercolumnation distance of these is going to be two blocks. 
like so. Two blocks there, two blocks there, two blocks here, and then a column. But it's at some points it does change, like here at the front for this pediment, when it drops to one, and then it jumps to three, and then it drops back to one. So let's, at the corner over here, let me just show you, we have a column base, then a space of one, a column base, a space of three, another column base, a space of one, a base, a space of two, a base, a space of two, a base, and a space of two, and then the entrance way here. Now behind that, for the first pavilion over here, we have at uh, intercolumnation distances are, go back to two for this, for all of these columns that you see here, until you get to this row back here, where we mirror what we did at the front with the one, and the three, and then the one. And like I said, in general, all of these around here are going to be two, all right? So I think you can see what to do with that. Over here, let's now take this column. This, is, uh, this one is three, and then it goes to three here for a while, then three again, three here, another three, and then back to two. Two again, two more, two, and one last two until you get to the back here. So let me just show you this from the top down. Sort of at a glance here, so you can see we have a, a run of five threes and then a run of five twos. Done like so. Now the columns over here, the spacing, this is another three and a one, a one over here. Then two, then three, then turn the corner for three, and then two, and then it's going to be hitting the foundation wall for the podium for our temple. Uh, we'll come back to that. Let's go back here to the corner. We have a distance of two, a two, another two, two again, two again, and this one also hits the base for the temple. And the base is being done out of cobblestone here, and then stone bricks on top of that. Um, and uh, you can leave some of the uh, foundation below there hollow if you want to save on some materials, but that's not really that much cobble. So I don't think you will have any trouble. Alright, so there's all of that from the top down, so you can get the distancing right. Uh, if you'll notice, it's... With the, the diorite and the cobble patterns we laid out in the last phase, it follows those very closely. In other words, none of these column bases should be overlapping that, that inner ring of cobblestone like you see done here. If one of them does, then you've made a, a mistake somewhere. All right, let's take a look over here at uh, the fountain. So on top of the ring that you built, you want to be placing half slabs, cobblestone half slabs like so. And then over here, according to this design, you're just pl be uh, placing two blocks of cobble and then upside down cobblestone stairs all the way around there, like so for that. And up here for the temple, you've already placed these stairs. So you're, you're placing another flight of stairs and then you're going back a block and placing another one behind that there in this pattern here. All right, so I believe that is all there is to say about this particular phase. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to be the next several phases are going to be going rather quick because on top of all of these column bases that we just laid out, you want to start placing your drums of diorite like so on every single one of those for two additional blocks all the way up as we go. And over here, here is the design for the triumphal entranceway, the main gateway. We just have some uh, three columns attached to uh, three of the signs, and then a main entranceway here. So once we come in the entranceway, let's take a look at our fountain. So you're gonna be placing some cobblestone half slabs in this pattern here leaving uh, gaps here with uh, cobblestone in the middle there. 
and there is nothing else to talk about except for the temple over here. So here you will be using your blocks of netherrack. If you prefer to use campfires, just uh, place those here instead of the netherrack. But we have some uh, braziers made of just uh, some simple upside down stone brick stairs. And uh, we have uh, cobblestone stairs that are ringing this entire platform here all the way to the back. And if you have built my small Roman temple before, this is a copy and paste of that build, by the way, which we are recycling to put in our Roman marketplace. So we have the, the foundation for that out of cobble, which I will just uh, I will just trace out the line of this for you so you can see it a little bit easier. I don't like this here. We have the, the one doorway over here that I had you collect. That's going in this building. And we have a couple of freestanding columns out here at the front. So I'll just show you this from the top down. You want to make that pattern out of cobblestone. As you see done there, and that will be the foundation for the temple. And I believe we can actually go on to the next phase. So there's going to be another quick one. All of your column drums, two more blocks of diorite on top of all of those, all the way around the building. Over here, you basically need to repeat everything for the archway here. Notice we have cobble and then stone bricks, then cobble and then stone bricks here. Alternating bands. On the inside here, though, we do have some upside down stone brick stairs on either side of that and on both sides like so let's take a look at the fountain on the interior here uh, we actually finished the fountain and the last phase so you can go ahead and fill it with water down here and you can place one bucket of water on the top there and that will bring your fountain to life one of my preferred fountain designs. It's very simple, um, but elegant. And let's uh, take a look over here. And uh, we have the, the lit nether rack here. And you can, as I said, replace this with campfires if you so choose. But on top of this, you want to have a couple of smooth stone slabs to finish out the stone braziers, as you see done there. So on top of all of what we did last time, you want to be making some more column bases out here for the front. Same design that you did over here with the, the diorite and everything. So back here, there's a small entranceway. We have some cobblestone walls on either side here. Our doorway. And here is the interior space of the temple. Done like so. Very simple. And the exterior also. So, as you can see, we have five attached columns to the walls here and two on the back. Now, of course, when columns are attached to buildings, they are called pilasters. And when they are freestanding, like the ones out here, they are pillars. Little fun fact for you. All right, I think we can actually go on to the next phase as well. So, over here, all the column drums, two more blocks, straight up like... So, all the way around the building. Over here, again, more details on the exterior for the triumphal gateway. We now have an interior diorite here, by the way, because this is where our Roman archway is going to be uh, built shortly, out of just a couple of blocks. The best we can do at this scale. Uh, the fountain is finished. Let's take a look at the temple itself. So... You are extending all these columns up now, and all those. And the uh, this one has, we started with the foundation of cobble, but then we did a layer of stone bricks, and then it's two layers of cobble, and then one layer of stone bricks. Done like so. Let's take a look at the interior here. We have a string course of upside down stone brick stairs just going all the way around the interior here. And some very, very small columns on the interior, like so. 
And uh, with that, we can actually go ahead and move on to the next phase where we are building our Corinthian capitals here. Of course, we are approximating the acanthus leaves with upside down stone brick stairs and cobblestone stairs, as you see done here on all four faces. So for every single column that you have been building so far, go around and put a uh, Corinthian capital on top of all of those. Same holds true here for the gateway. Also, the attached pilasters. And uh, you can see here the design for the completed diorite archway. Like so. All right, let's take a look back here at the temple again. So we have the columns and the pilasters here. Uh, over the doorway, we have some small details. Uh, upside down stairs and smooth stone slabs that I neglected to talk about in the last phase. It just, it just sort of makes a little tiny triangular pediment over our doorway here. So if we go inside, we can uh, see the design for the interior as well. Very simple to do. And of course, our columns and everything on the back here. And you can see the layering that we're doing with the one to two stone brick to cobble ratio, like so. All right, so uh, that's all there is for uh, that phase. Let us move on to the next one. So now that we have built all of our Corinthian capitals, uh, veterans of my tutorials will know that the next phase is to add the entablature, and that is going to be done with uh, straight runs of diorite and stone brick stairs upside down on both sides of those, as you see done here. And I think you can see that they attach to all the, the uh, tops of the columns and everything, so that should be fairly clear to do. There is a small difference. Remember we had uh, one of these, we have the, the archway is incised into the pediment, and we are doing that with uh, just a die right here, like so. I'll show you the other side of this, like that, very simple. Uh, over here, let's take a look at this from the bottom here, how all that ties together. Then along the front, and it, uh, it overhangs the archway that we built by one block on both sides, and it wraps around that uh, like this here. All right, so we have another uh, broken uh, archway through here, just like we did at the front there. Another one back here, and another one back here as well, and another one on the side here. These are sort of like uh, side gateways, so you can walk into the marketplace from any of three directions. And uh, let me give you a view around the back. And then this thing just runs slam into the temple, like so, colliding with the columns and everything. Uh, it misses it a bit here, but that's, you know, the best we could do. Um, at this point also, you're putting on the lowest portions of the Corinthian capitals for the temple. That corresponds to this block down here. Now let's go on the inside here. We're starting to make a barrel vault inside of our temple here. This is another characteristic Roman feature. We have just a very simple barrel vault that we are putting inside of this. Done like so. And uh, let me show you the, the back here. And give you good views of how this ties into the building. Like that there. All right, I believe that's all there is to say about this phase. So let's move on to the next one where we start building the roof structure. We've only got a couple of phases to go, so we're in the home stretch now. So over here, we have the rest of this archway. We built up to this point here, but we are extending that over 
like this here to make a complete archway. And we also need to sort of bend the entire entablature as we do that. So we are doing that with upside down stone brick stairs here. But we also have the, the roof for the uh, triangular pediment that we're going to be building up here also. And you want to be building the corners of that here at the cornice. So this is where we're using all the red nether brick and the uh, nether brick slabs. Uh, I changed this to blackstone in my texture pack. Um, and in between these, at a, it's in general a distance of four blocks, you will be putting these uh, cobblestone ribs done like so. I'll just show you. Like this here, all along the building, there's going to be four ribs in total. Same design back here as at the front. Take a look underneath. So we have that going along like this here. And you want to be building the entire thing like that there. So the design we did at the front for that first arch, you want to be making another one of those over here. Except we don't have a pediment on top of that, so we are just putting cobblestone and straight runs like this here on top of that. And I believe that uh, these are these are half slabs right there. But then they go to full blocks, and then we will be making just a, a cobble archway to cap that off. So back here, all of this is uh, just like all of that over there. For the roof and everything, we've got another four cobblestone ribs, but we also have some side details where we have a bend in the uh, thing over here. And it's going to be doing uh, it uh, like that. And a few more ribs this way, I think five. And then the whole thing slams in straight into the temple, like so. In general, the temple should be uh, overriding the uh, pavilion here. So I'll just show you how all of this ties in. If you get a couple of blocks off, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's sort of hidden, so I myself would not even notice if you change that. So we're building the entablature for the temple here. The lowest portion corresponds to this down here with the diorite. And you're doing that in a big rectangle all around the temple according to this pattern here. And you want to have a couple of lintels of diorite for the columns over here, up front like that. And let's go inside. So we have our barrel vault in here now, being made out of uh, diorite and cobble. And uh, you can see the design for this quite clearly, I think. And as we're going, the, the roof behind that is be being filled in with just straight cobblestone. All right, I think uh, I neglected to talk about uh, the front entrance way, so let's do that on the way out. So over here, you are doing uh, cobblestone corners and then die right behind that. This is, uh, what, five by what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks of that way. And let's move on to the next phase, and let's actually go straight to finishing that. So on top of that, you want to put upside down stone brick stairs. And then behind that, some smooth stone slabs and then uh, cobblestone slabs right in the middle there to cap that entire thing off and just leave it flat. Uh, if you want to, however, you could probably, uh, it does have space for a small statue. If you wanted to say, uh, put one of the uh, Akrotarion up there from my, um, Greek Parthenon tutorial, or maybe a soldier statue or something, or maybe even an eagle. Uh, but that's up to you, just uh, for decoration's sake. So at the front here, you can, I think you can clearly see the pattern of the diorite and the half slabs being done like so. Of course, the roof patterns are repeating patterns. So they are all going up like this here. You can see from the top down, the, the red blocks are full blocks, and the black ones are the half slabs. 
Let's take a look underneath the pavilion. So we can see this underneath here. So we just have this tying together with the red nether brick and a central ridge of uh, cobble coming through here as well. All right, so over here we have our side arches now finished with the, the uh, cobble like I talked about. Very simple pattern. I've used these on a couple of builds already, specifically on, I believe, my uh, Roman estate build made a copious use of these. Uh, back here, let's take a look at, uh, well, the first, the roof. On the top, we have uh, the bend on it, in it over here. And you can see that from the corners, we are putting in some uh, cobble and half slabs. Arranged like so. And of course, they're all meeting up here at the top, and one from the inner corner like that there and all this is again colliding with the entire temple which is having the lowest portion of its roof being built as well for which you are using some of the chiseled stone bricks i had you collect not load stones chiseled stone bricks and uh, let's take a look uh, actually inside the temple we have the finished barrel vault in here now it's just the roofed over with straight cobble from the last phase and under here as well, you want to use more chiseled stone bricks for the uh, portico out here as well. So up here, we are building the lowest portions of the triangular pediment with uh, upside down stone bricks to finish off the entablature and the cornice over here. And then we are building out the uh, triangular portion of the temple here with we'll die right behind that. And the uh, whole thing is just sort of colliding together up here with the rest of the roof. I'll give you good tight views of how that is arranged. And we also need to take a look at that from below. And it may be a little bit too dark. So let's have a quick potion for that. There we go. So you can clearly see what is going on in here with that. And for the rest of the roof up here as well. It's not really a finished ceiling in here because, as I said, this is a marketplace, so it's just meant to be a covered pavilion. It doesn't have to have uh, a finished space in it for that reason. And I think we can go ahead and go on to the next phase, actually, which is, coincidentally, the last phase... So over here we can see the, um, we finished the archway for the gate in the last phase. So here is the top part done like so, which is a straight ridge of, uh, I believe this is full blocks of cobblestone on top of that for the roof like that. So that's from the top down there and let's take a look from the, the bottom up like so underneath here. It should look uh, something like that. And uh, the interior space over here as well, that uh, is going to look similar. So I'll just show you that from the top down where all this meets together. And the whole thing meets together over here for the roof of the temple. Which, as you would guess, uh, the roof of the temple is just another uh, repeating pattern of the roof that I made for the pavilions. And on top of the chiseled stone bricks, you want to put a little uh, decorative acroterion of a um, couple stone walls on all of the points up here where you see them. And then just a, uh, a little ridge of cobblestone slabs on the top along here for just a little bit extra bit of ornamentation. So I'll show you this from the back here. And again, from the, the front here. And once you have placed your last cobblestone acroterion up there, then your Roman marketplace will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed building your Roman-style marketplace. This is a requested tutorial that I've uh, people have been wanting me to do for a while. So 
I wanted to go ahead and get it out. And remember, if anything was unclear in the tutorial itself, the world itself is available for download in the video description, so you can come here and uh, take a look at the phases and everything for yourself. So thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time.